It's another Monday here with Teacher Jenny. Join me for another topic. And this time, we are going to talk about limits of algebraic functions. And this is, by the way, the part four of my video in which we are going to talk about finding or evaluating limits of radical functions. Let's go to the first example. So we have the limit of our square root of x squared plus 7 minus 3 over x plus 3 as x approaches 3. Notice that we've got here a combination of uh, a rational function and so with our radical expression in there. So as we can see, we can try to do the, the C substitution directly here, but making sure that we've got no 0 over 0 or indeterminate because if that is the case, we are going to do manipulation on our function. So let's try it out. So we have here the square root of x is 3, so we square that 1 plus 7 minus 3 over x is 3 and then plus 3. So we are going to uh, simplify this one. So we've got square root of 3 squared is 9 plus 7 minus 3 over 3 plus 3 is 6. And that will be equal to, again, simplifying the numerator part square root of 9 plus 7 is 16 minus 3 over 6. Simplifying again the numerator part, we've got square root of 16, that's 4 minus 3 over 6. 4 minus 3, that's, uh, that is 1, and then we've got over 6. So this is now our limit of that function as your x approaches 3. Let's go to the next example. We've got limit of Square root of x plus 1 minus 2 over x squared minus 9 as your x approaches 3. So let's try out our C substitution here if this would simply work out. So we have the square root of your x which is 3 plus 1 minus 2 over x which is 3 squared minus 9. Then we try to simplify both position. We've got from the top, we've got the square root of 3 plus 1, which is 4, minus 2 over 3 squared is 9, minus 9. This is equal to the square root of 4, which is 2, minus 2 over 9 minus 9 is a 0. And then we've got 2 minus 2 is a 0 over 0. So that is an indeterminate. And this time, we are going to try to manipulate our given function. So manipulating the given function here is, let me erase that one, is simply doing something on that function in which that would lead to cancellation and later on we'll have our limit. So let us have that one. Now, since we've got a radical symbol on our expression or we have a radical, so automatic we may use our conjugate and the rationalizing Rationalizing, this is a process in which we try to eliminate our radical symbol so that we can somehow find our expression appealing. Okay, anyways, that's not gonna, that's not uh, the, the reason there. The reason there is for us to cancel something in here for this certain situation. We wish to cancel something in there so that we can have our limit. So that is why we're using rationalizing. But on this part here, instead of the denominator, the radical symbol, or the radical expression is at the numerator. So we will be basing our process there on the numerator. And since the numerator part is a binomial, that means to say that we are going to find its conjugate. When you say conjugate, that means to say we are going to simply copy all the terms but then change the operation in between the two terms. So let's start with multiplying this one with the conjugate of that, which is the square root of x plus 1. Take note, we're copying the same term. And then we have from minus, that will be a plus in here. And then we also copy our 2. And then we divide this by squared, the same thing. So whatever we've got at the top, we are to copy that one at the bottom part so that we do not change our, or we will not be changing our function. 
because we are multiplying that with 1. Now, simplifying, this will be now, or multiplying that 1, this would lead to, if you remember the factoring part, when you've got like this, x squared minus 25, once you try to factor that 1, that will give off an x minus 5 times x plus 5. Why am I mentioning this one? Because this is related to what we're having right now. Notice that here we've got binomial, we've got the difference of two terms, and the sum of two terms that are identical. So what we are going to do is to simply go back to the original product. So meaning to say, what we're having here, we've got the same term, and the, others, the other terms are the same. So that means to say what we are going to do is to simply square this one here and then square also this part here and then we've got a minus all the time. Now, going back or going back to our limit, what we are having here is this one which is the same. So what we are going to do with that is to simply do square that one. So again, we are squaring the first term. And then this will always be the operation after uh, squaring the first term. This will always be a minus. Next, on the second term, we also have to square that one. So that will be the same all throughout when we're using rationalizing, using a conjugate. Next, we have here divided by all over. Let me I rewrite this one. I forgot to write a limit here. So this will be now the limit of your square root of x plus 1 being squared minus 2 being squared over. This one here, we will not be us multiplying that one. We will not be doing FOIL method here because we wanted to know whether we can cancel something in there. So that is why we do not simplify that one yet. But then later on, once we knew that this that there is no uh, or nothing can be cancelled in there, then we can go for the simplifying and the FOIL method of that one later. Okay, and then this is now approaching to the number 3. Next, we are going to simplify that one further. This is now equal to the limit of this one will be cancelled and so without 1. So we are left with an x plus 1 at the top. And then a minus, and then 2 squared is a 4. Over, this is x squared minus 9 times square root of x plus 1 plus 2. As your x approaches 3. Now, this is now equal to the limit of your x plus 1 minus 4. This is minus 3 or negative 3 over x squared minus 9. Take note, at the top, we've got an x minus 3 here. That means to say we may cancel the x minus 3 in there. If you try to look at your denominator, we've got an x squared minus 9 in which we can factor it out using uh, the two factors which got a minus and a plus and then getting the square root of your x squared, that's an x. And so with this one, Getting the square root of your 9, which is 3, and so with this one. And then we have to continue. We've got to multiply that with the square root of x plus 1, and then plus 2. So here we can now cancel something. We can cancel x minus 3 here. So this is now equal to the limit of your fraction. Take note, we cannot move x plus 3 times square root of x plus 1 plus 2 at the top because this is the normal mistake of the student. They are always ending up with putting this one at the top because we've canceled something or everything at the top. No, that's not the case. Take note, even though we canceled x minus 3 here, it will always be that all number is a fact, has a factor which is the number itself and a 1. So once we cancel x minus 3 here, we are left with a 1 at the top, and then we are left with x plus 3 at the bottom, multiplied with the square root of x plus 1, and then plus 2, and then 
we have x approaches 3. So this is now equal to, this time we can now try to substitute. We have 1 over x is 3 plus 3. And then we have square root of, we've got an x again. So we have 3 plus 1. And then plus 2 is outside. And then we simplify that one further. So we've got a 1 here. 3 plus 3 is 6 times the square root of 3 plus 1 is 4 and then plus 2. And then we try to simplify that one further. This is now equal to 1 over 6 times the square root of 4 is 2 plus 2. This is equal to 1 over 6 times 4 which is equal to 1 times 6 times 4 is 24. This is now our limit for this particular function. So the next example here is the limit of 16 minus x over 4 minus square root of x as x approaches 16. So let us try to find out whether we can try to substitute this one or we will be getting a 0 over 0 after substitution. So let's have the limit. Let's try substitution first. So we've got 16 minus our x there is 16 over we have 4 minus the square root of x which is 16. This will be equal to a 0 over 4 minus the square root of 16 is 4. So we still got a 0 over 0. So after that one we go back and try to do something on our function. So we may do again. Because this is with a radical symbol, so we are going to do the rationalizing and then applying the conjugate. So we will now be rationalizing. We use the conjugate. This time, since your denominator contains a radical symbol, that will be the basis as to what will be our conjugate there. This is now with 4, so we copy 4 here. This is a minus, so that should be a plus because we're doing the conjugate. And then this one is the square root of x. Similarly, we are also to copy that one at the top. So we have 4 plus square root of x. And then we are going to uh, try to simplify that one. So this is now the limit of, we just simply copy the top. So 16 minus x times 4 plus square root of x. So again, I will not. Multiply that one using the FOIL method. No, that's not a good uh, practice because later on we might know that there might be something to cancel at the top or, or at the bottom. So it is safe for us not to do that one. But now what we had as or what we have here as a conjugate, of course, we will, we will be simplifying that one because we wish to cancel that radical symbol in there. Now, for... And then we've got 4 here, we've got a minus, we've got a plus in here, square root of x, and a square root of x here. That means to say, we will be applying now the sum and difference on the special product. Or the sum and difference of the binomials on the special product. So to do that, we are going to get the first term. First term is 4, square that 1, minus, get the second term, square root of x, and then we square that 1 as your x approaches 16. So we will be simplifying. So we've got a limit of your 16 minus x will be copied. And so with the other factor, 4 plus square root of x over 4 squared is 16 minus this one will be canceled out. So we've got an x. And then if you try to look at this, it is clearly visible that we've got a 16 minus x at the bottom part and at the top. So that means to say we can cancel this one out and that one. So we are left with the limit of 4 plus the square root of x as your x approaches 16. So by that, we can now start substituting. So we have 4 plus square root of our x is 16. We've got 4 plus 4. This is equal to an eight. So the limit of that particular function is an eight. So that's it. I hope you were able to learn something 
on this video and please do not forget to like share and subscribe and always remember that in math the secret recipe in math is always practice so that the the process will sink in and eventually you will be able to recall those processes during your exams and in any other applications so once again this is your teacher jenny saying good luck